My guest today is Tony Barrow. Tony, well known to people here on Merseyside and naturally because of his close connection with the Beatles. Uh, Tony himself starts off, I think, I'm right to say, Tony, aren't I, with the Liverpool Echo? I did indeed, yes. 1954, when I was 17, I got the, the freelance job of writing the record review column off the record for the Liverpool Echo. I think you were disco, were you? That's right, D-I-S-K-E-R, yeah. Now, we're here to talk about uh, another new Beatles, new in brackets, uh, DVD called The Beatles Rare and Unseen. That's right, yes, and it's out literally today. And uh, there are some very, it's, it's, it's presumably an old, it's an American television programme, isn't it, Tone? No, it's not this, it's, it's, a, it's a conglomeration of, of new stuff. Uh, what's good about it is that you've got the, the new stuff in, in Beatles Ran Unseen includes a lot of footage that hasn't been seen before, like there's um, some of the earliest known footage of the Beatles on stage in Liverpool, but dating back to February 62. Now, I thought that, thought that was riveting, uh, Tony, that Sam Leach explained where that came from, didn't he? That's right. And That's um, right. But do you know what made me so sad about that? It, 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 you, it, you, you've probably had this as well, Tony. I, I, I said to myself, it has no look at all, because during that entire footage, there is no sign of Pete Best. <laughs> The other, the other three block him out yes, totally that's right. That's right. throughout the whole bit. So the, the earliest known pictures of them on stage, even then, they block Pete out. Yes, yes. Well, the two things, as I say, that, that I, I really knew about this. One is the amount of footage of, 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 from occasions that really haven't been spotlighted yeah. before like this. Uh, and I'll tell you about some of the other ones, actual, where the footage came from for a couple of the other ones in a minute. But the actual names of the people being interviewed, we have not got the same tired old selection of, yeah. of rinkies such as myself. Well, I am in it. <laughs> <laughs> I do say so. Yeah. Some You've stuff. got some excellent footage live on stage in France, haven't you? That's what there's that. Uh, and the interviewees include people like Phil Collins. Now, uh, he hasn't gone on a DVD before talking about mm -hmm. the Beatles. Steve Harley yeah. hasn't. Um, uh, uh, Ken Dodd, even, yeah. who's uh, completely new to that th scene. And Ken, uh, uh, Ken Dodd and Tony Booth and Jerry Marsden. Now, we've heard Jerry Marsden talk many a time, but he has never talked very much about the Beatles. So that's what makes... And, uh, this a bit different. and the nice thing was, his admiration and respect for them shines yes. through, doesn't it? Yeah, you see, a lot of people never realised that. They always thought that there was a just sort of really deep-seated enmity uh, in the rivalry between the, the Liverpool bands, but there wasn't really uh, enmity at all. There was rivalry, serious rivalry, yeah. but it was in a healthy kind of yeah. way, as any of the lads would tell you today. The interesting thing about the footage in France as well is that uh, it was taken by Trini Lopez's drummer, who at the time, of course, hadn't the faintest idea who the Beatles were. No, no, not at all. And and that again brings in um, somebody who hasn't been on a DVD about the Beatles before, and that is Sylvie Vartan, yeah. the French girl singer who supported the Beatles in um, Paris concerts around that time uh, in January '64. So that's new. And then you've also got um, some snippets of a, a, a John Lennon interview recorded in New York in 1975 for French television. Now, that's yeah. never been heard here before. And he's very frank in that interview, isn't he, Tony? Yes. Yes, it's, 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 it, that, that's the point about this. I mean, uh, there is nothing new about the Beatles. You and me, for a start, having been pretty close to the whole thing, would say, oh, you, you can't tell me anything. I know all about the Beatles. But in fact, there's still stuff that we haven't um, yeah. known about in the past. Like you, you, you hear some of this stuff and say, oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah. Yeah, like John, John said, we were treated as fashion icons, yet we bought all our stuff from the shops. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Does what... That's what, because that's what everybody did in those days. The... Uh, there, there, there weren't these supermodels going around no. and so-called celebs being dressed by celebrity um, fashion uh, fashionists. There's fashion also shows. some there's also some really good live footage in Scotland, Tony. That's and, right. And do, do you know do you know what what really made me smile because this footage on stage stage in Glasgow shows the jelly babies being thrown on stage yeah. and you can see the floor is littered with jelly babies. Yes, you've heard the talk of that before, but the, you, you've never actually seen it. Right. And it left this sort of very sticky substance on the floor and it, <laughs> 
it was, uh, it, what has reminded me uh, of that these days is um, chewing gum on pavements. Yeah. You know, yeah. that stickiness that you suddenly find on the bottom of your foot. Well, that's what it was like on theatre stages after a beat was gone. And there's, there's lots of, there's, there's some great footage shot by Ringo when they all went on holiday, which shows you how at ease John and Paul were yes. on, on any camera anywhere. Yes, it kind, it kind of uh, makes people realise, oh, I'd read about them being keen on shooting stuff with their own mm. cameras, but I, I thought that was just publicity. I didn't know they really did that. Now you've got a DVD that shows these things happening, you know? Absolutely right, and uh, it shows you how naturally we were, even it, like, before fame had really hit them that hard. Yes, yes. Now, I mean, I sound as though I'm, I'm working here as the publicist for it. I'm not. <laughs> I haven't done a PR job since 1980, uh, when I came out of the PR side and went into purely into writing. But uh, and the reason I'm happy to get involved and say nice things of, uh, about this for uh, Wiener World, the, the producers of, of this, is because it is so difficult. Stage, I must confess, uh, I'm supposed to be a fully retired. Um, 73-year-old XER of the Beatles, and in fact, I choose very carefully now anything that I do do in the way of uh, interviews, for whether it's for television yeah. or in this case for a DVD, um, because I don't want to get involved in the whole mass of third-rate mediocre stuff that there is. I chose to get myself involved in doing an interview for this and then uh, uh, talking about it because it's a cut above the average. It also gave me the chance... You brought up the, the, the business of, of uh, the very first jobs I did in 1960, in, in 1954, were sleeve notes. Well, now it, uh, the, the whole world has come around full circle for me. I have done a sleeve note to go with this. <laughs> That's book. right. It's, it's, four, it's an eight-page brooch. It's much yes, more it than a sleeve a little, note. A nice little book. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually... Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not a technically-minded blog. I don't know how they've managed this, but uh, you know how when there's little booklets in some of these DVDs yeah. and CDs... You have a hell of a job trying to pluck them out and you tear them out. Yeah. Well, this is very neat. I mean, my wife commented on this. You know, you the, just lift there's it up. There's also a very, there's also a very important moment there because Norman Smith's on it. Who was the engineer, wasn't That's he? Right, yes, and it's, it's interesting when Norman Smith's talking about Love Me Do, and he says, he says that um, George decided Pete Best wasn't good enough, and so did I. Yes. Yes. Now, that's the first time I've heard that publicly uh, uh, said. Yes. I mean, there's, as I say, there's a lot of stuff that we've heard, heard in the past, and purely as hearsay, and you're now hearing it here um, from the people who know, from people who yeah. were there at the time, um, not hangers-on who are telling you third-hand information, but people who are actually there, and they're telling you exactly how it was, and that, that's what I... I personally find interesting. I, yeah. I, I was in the middle of it all as well, Quite but right. I find it very interesting to have so many different people, all the way from Sylvie Vartan to, to Phil Collins, uh, emphasising this or that, and me thinking, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. OK, it's called The Beatles Rare and Unseen. As Tony said, it's, it's, it's released this week. There's also a very funny story, wait till you see it, uh, that Tony Booth tells about him being in a dealer's when John Lennon calls to pick up some stuff. Oh, Tony, right. always good talking to you. You take care. You take care of yourself, Bill. Thanks very a lot. happy to talk to you. Bye-bye.